Hey guys, and welcome to our tutorial on the art of camouflage. Uh, what we're going to be working with today is taking our knowledge on color theory and color mixing, as well as our shading and texture. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be using the image over here where I have a leaf bug hiding in a giant leaf. So most of the time my kids will see this and be like, oh, I'm going to be using green. But as you've known in the past when I had you do other steps, we don't just use green. We use colors that work with green. So we have our yellows, we have some blues, even a violet. I have a little bit of black that might help with some details later. I even have some brown. After looking at this picture long enough, I notice areas that are more brown. So that's why I have that. So to get us started, I'm gonna have the camera tilted towards my sketchbook down below. And we're gonna get started from there. All right, so what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna fill my entire sketchbook in this tutorial, but I am gonna draw out a box to represent the area that we are gonna be doing this image in. Now in your actual project, you will be filling in the entire paper. So let's see, my paper is gonna have a box because the picture I have is more of a box shape. Now, I will say this from the beginning, when we are doing this project, you are not using any regular pencils to sketch this out because you cannot blend out color pencil and regular lead. It doesn't work that way. So this is where I need to be really, really patient and lightly, lightly sketch everything out using color pencils, okay? So let me show you how that works. I'm gonna use my light yellow green for this since majority of everything I'm gonna be drawing is green. So I'm gonna look at my image and I'm gonna kind of start out with the big section. So I'm gonna start sketching out my leaf So that's the top of the leaf that I have in the main image. I have a little bit of this other leaf that's kind of in the background folded. And let's see, I'm gonna come down to the bottom of my box. I'm gonna see, using my observation skills, where the archway of this leaf is. It's okay if it's not perfect. Nobody knows you made a mistake unless you say it. So let's keep going. Got the edge of the leaf where the bug is gonna be. Kind of goes up a little bit and down right about here. All right, so now I kind of have my area of where I know I'm gonna be drawing my bug. And I know on this, it's really hard to see because I'm drawing very, very lightly, but I will bring this to the camera in just a second so you can see what I'm doing. So let's see, I have this archway of the vein of the leaf and right below that vein is our leaf bug. Okay, so it looks like his head somewhere right here. It kind of looks like a grasshopper on his head, truthfully. So about the shape of his head, so this round part, this round part of his eyes, and he's got like little antennas. He's got his other antenna going up. All right, looks like it's gonna come down into the leaf where it starts to hide. It's got his leg, kind of comes out and then down. We have another leg that comes here and kind of grips a little bit to the leaf. Another leg that does the same thing here. Okay. All right, I think I got a decent portion of our sketch. So I'm gonna get this closer to the camera so you can see what's going on, guys. All right, so here is my very light, light sketch of my animal or bug hiding in a leaf. So as you can tell, I was very, very light with my lines so I can build up my layers later. So maybe I made areas too big that need to be smaller. That's okay. Majority of this background is gonna be that green. So that's why I use that color, okay? So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna start adding my layers using my other colors and stuff. All right, got my picture back up. All right, so looking at it, I need to figure out where my darks and my lights are. So I used my yellow green. So I think I'm gonna kind of go back with, let's see, I got an apple green. Let me see what color that looks like. It's actually a pretty nice color. 
So let's see, I might do that for my, my lighter areas. I'm doing this very lightly and just kind of filling in the area, but it's enough that I can go back and add textures, lines, other things that I need to. But I just want to kind of visualize where my light and my darks are. Okay, so I've got a light area. And it looks like I have a little bit of a light area here. And I have the bug right here who overall is pretty light. Alrighty. So I've got that figured out. Now I gotta figure out my dark area. So I'm gonna switch over to my regular green, not a dark green, just regular. And I'm gonna figure out my background and other areas that are dark. Just gonna kind of lightly fill in those sections. Again, I'm doing this very, very lightly, guys. I can still go back and color mix later if I need to. I've got a little bit of dark in here. All right, so I'm gonna bring this up to you so you can see what I can see. And I'll pause the video, do a few things, and show you from there. So, as you can see on the camera, I have now lightly filled in my sections which are dark and light. Now this doesn't mean that it's my lightest light, it just means this is a generally light area versus areas that are dark in the background. So I'm going to pause the video for a quick sec and I'm gonna fill in different sections so you can see what it looks like when we start blending our colors and figuring out our textures and everything, okay? Give me just a sec. All right, so what I did was I went through my dark background areas and I color mixed with my green, my blue, and my navy. So that's what's giving this effect to help these areas show that they are in the background and to help the things in the foreground become closer and brighter. So I'll bring my sketchbook a little bit closer so you can see what I was doing. So as you can see in here, I first filled in this area with my green. I went back and added my blue to these areas. And then I went back to make it even darker on the edges where you have this nice sharp edge here with my navy. So I know on this one, it looks like it's a black, it is a navy. So that is what's helping give this dimension between our background and our foreground. So I also went back with my green and I outlined the veins on here. So you can see the veins of the leaf and I filled it in with that yellow to show some highlights so I know that these areas are gonna be brighter, as well as I kind of went back with some yellow and added the areas I noticed were the brightest on the edge of the leaf and a little bit on my leaf bug. So I'm gonna pause this video one more time and I'm gonna start adding my layers in here, kind of similar to how I did the background, okay? Give me just a sec. All right, so what I went ahead and went back and did is I took my light green that I originally sketched everything out with and I added the veins on our leaf up here. I also used this time to outline our bug's body and start to show like the shadows underneath the leaf that the light kind of comes through and shows of their legs. And I started to do the slight same vein technique I did here as I did the leaf because we are still working with our camouflage. So. What I'm gonna probably work on next is I'm going to be blending out a little bit more of this area now that I have some details figured out where I wanna do my shadow, how to get my bug to stand out a little bit, but not by too much, because again, we're trying to make him not show as obviously, okay? All right, give me just a second. All right, so what I did was I filled out with my regular light green on this background so the bug's body will start to come forward so you can have a better chance of seeing this. I also went back a little bit in this background, this leaf that's kind of behind this one, and I added a little bit of shadow by adding my regular green and my light green. So we have a little bit of depth back here. Not as dark as our backpack background, but at least this way we get to see those layers of foreground, midground, background. So I'm not gonna pause the video for this so you can see these next steps about how I'm going to work with the bug and the leaf, because you still know that they are two separate objects, but you want them to be very subtle when they're standing out, okay? So I'm just gonna switch this back over to me. And ideally when I'm gonna be doing this, I have to think about my, my lights, my darks, my shadows, my highlights, uh, my midtones, all of these things when I'm doing this, because I want to avoid making something look really, really flat when it's three-dimensional. 
So first things off, I'm going to probably take my yellow truthfully and just lightly fill in my legs of my bug. I'm not pressing very hard because I just want the yellow to help me remember, oh, this is a leg, this isn't like a vein on the body or anything. So I'm gonna lightly fill in with my yellow. And I got a little bit of highlight as well on the back of this bug. So I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow as well here. Okay. And I think I can do a little bit of that vein right here. Okay. So let's see, I've got apple green, light green, and regular green. I think I'm gonna use my apple green truthfully for the body underneath where I'm trying to get the legs to stand out a little bit. So I'm gonna use my shading method like we did with our black and white with the grayscale. I'm gonna kind of make it real light when I'm sketching this on. And then as I start to come out, I'm gonna make it even lighter. So that way the leg will start to stand out. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna blend out towards the edge of the leaf. As I get closer back to the leg, I'm gonna do it a little bit darker, just so like show a little bit of a shadow. I'm gonna do the same thing over here with these two legs. All right, so I'll get this a little closer so you can see what's going on. So I took my green, and because I want my leg to stand out, what I did was I made this darker, but as I started to blend out, I purposely put less pressure, so it came out lighter. That's why you can get the illusion of depth with this leg against the body. Same thing a little bit here. I know with the color pencils, it looks really grainy. It's not as sharp and vivid, but when we get towards the end and we put more pressure on these edges, it will start to look a little bit more clean. So I wanna do the top part of the leg, or I guess the top part of the body with the leg. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch over to my regular light green, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna start out a little darker around the edge of my leg, but as I start to go out, I'm gonna put less pressure until I get to that edge where I have that highlight of yellow. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna put a little bit more pressure so it's darker here. As again, I fade out, put less pressure. Okay, so now we can see our legs of our bug. We can clearly see the head, and I've kind of left some space and looks a little white just to show the antennas later because I have to be really careful since it's a really thin area. But now we're starting to see the body, the legs, and everything different from our leaf, okay? So let's see. What I'm gonna do is actually kind of come back with a little bit of my blue, truthfully, because even though I know there's not really blue here, I know that I need to use my color mixing to start to show some difference because if I just use green, I can only make it go so far. So what I'm gonna do with my blue around this leg is very carefully create a line so it looks a little bit more sharp. So again, I'm using a blue, not a black, to give us this nice sharp edge. Here we go. Okay, so I'll kind of show this a little bit closer. So now our legs are starting to look really nice and clean. All I had to do was use the blue, the sharp end of my pencil, to just kind of create these little lines, these edges. And I didn't make it super bold. I actually made it really sketched and light, but because I used that sharp point, it makes it look like I did it really bold. And this is what happens when you're color mixing. For example, if I want my head to pop out a little bit more, I'm probably going to use the same blue to make the head pop out more from the leaf. So once I have my line here, that I'm outlining where the legs are, outlining where the head is and where the leaf is, I'm going to take that, take my regular green, and I'm going to blend that out.
And again, when I'm blending, I'm only going dark here. And when I get towards the center, I'm putting less pressure. So I'm not trying to make a solid chunk of green or dark. I'm just trying to make the legs and the head stand out from the leaf. Looks like I can do a little bit right here as well. Kind of blend that. There we go. So what I'm going to do is pause the video one more time. I'm going to blend out everything on our leaf so the bug will be standing out a little bit more. But again, I'm going to make it look like it's part of the leaf, just a section of it. Okay, give me one sec. All right, so I got quite a bit done on here. And as you can see, I have the background being dark. I'll probably go back and change that a little bit, make it look darker. But I have a leaf that's bent over that the leaf bug is holding on to. I have the same kind of pattern that's starting to happen over here that I'll finish out in just a little bit that's similar to this. Now this is a bit stark and I think that that's not blended very well. So I purposely left this way so you could see the veins of this leaf. <coughs> but as you can see, we are starting to get that color blending. I'm using a lot of my blues down here in these brighter areas. I used a little bit more of that light brown, including in the legs and over here just to start showing the differences between these objects. So I'm gonna flip this back over to me for a second and then take a few moments to kind of think about things that I can make pop out a little bit more. I can easily go back with a violet if I want in my background here instead of a black to kind of get some more sharp edges and to get things to look a little bit darker as well as down here. Again, I'm blending out these areas. And you could use black, but I generally say don't use black unless you absolutely are necessary to use it. And it's usually only in a very few areas that you want something to pop out. But you could easily substitute violet or any darker colors instead. So if I want to have like certain areas of my bug to kind of break forward a little bit, instead of using my black, I'm using violet just to get a few areas to come forward, make it a little bit more sharp. Get my eye right there, a little bit of shadow behind his head, have his antenna, go over here. And I'm not making a full outline as you notice, I'm just purposely choosing these areas that I think that are blending in a little too much. They're not standing out just enough like I need them to. Okay, let me show you on that. So I went back with my violet and I added just a few little areas that I thought weren't standing out just enough to show these are two separate legs that are overlapping. So I used my violet just to put in these quick little lines, these quick little shadows, just to help pull that forward. And it's the same thing I use just now to blend out to make this look darker back here versus the leaf. So um, I'm gonna try and finish this out one last time so you can see what the finished result looks like. But again, remember when you're doing this, you're trying to blend and mix your colors. And as you can see, I didn't just use green. I used violet, I used blue, navy blue, uh, regular green, apple green, yellow light green, yellow, and I think brown. Yeah, I used brown a few areas. So I'm gonna finish this out and we can see what our finished result is. All right, and I think I'm done. So went back, did some more details, some more blending, and here we go. We have a leaf bug hiding in a leaf. So it's perfect if it's, you can still see what's going on here, but if I was probably from a distance, I probably wouldn't see the whole thing at once. So if I kind of bring this back, that's probably not the best example because <laughs> of my lighting, but you can still see the leaf bug, but if you were further away, it probably wouldn't be as easy. All right. So I know I paused this video a lot and I did a lot in between those pauses and I do apologize for that, but 
I try to hit on the points that I think are the most important, but at the same time, I wanna show you what those results look like when you do take those steps. So just as I said, instead of using black, use a violet. Make your backgrounds dark, but don't use black. Mix your greens, your blues, whatever it is that you need, and that will really make a really big vivid pop for your artwork. So um, other than that, remember that your yellow is a highlight. It's easier to do yellow in the beginning, not so easy at the end when you're trying to make something brighter later. But I hope you did enjoy this video and I really enjoyed doing this for the last hour and a half, not an hour and a half for you, hour and a half for me. <laughs> so I look forward to seeing y'all in class and working with you. I'm not expecting you to do something like this in one sitting. I expect this to be spread out over several days and you practicing and trying, okay? And again, if you have questions, please ask me and send me a message on Schoology, email me, those kind of things. So, all right. Well, I hope you all have a great day, guys, and I will see you all next time.